Hi everybody, Mr. Gerhard here, and I'm going to make a quick video about composition of functions. This is kind of piggyback off of 6.3, which had a little bit of that in there. I wanted to talk about how we com compose functions using f of x and g of x, and then also evaluate composition of functions where we plug values into one function, take that and plug it into another function. And we'll also talk a little bit about domain. So <clears throat> We're going to start off by just talking about what it means to evaluate a function. And for example, right here we got uh, g of x equals 2x minus 7. Now if I were to ask you like what g of 1 is, you would simply say 2 times 1 minus 7. So 2 minus 7, that's negative 5. Negative 5 would be what g of 1 is. If I asked you what g of negative 3 is, you'd plug in negative 3 where there's an x, and you'd say 2 times negative 3 minus 7. This is negative 6 minus 7, which is negative 13. Then if I ask you, like, I don't know, what g of stickman is, well, that's pretty easy because <clears throat> stickman's taking the place of x. So it would be 2 times stickman minus 7. Now, I can't evaluate that any further, but that would be good. And then if I ask you, okay, well, what's g of f of x. Well now f of x is taking the place of where x is and so that would be 2 f of x minus 7. And that's how we do composition of functions. In fact right here we have g of f of x. Here is g of x. Here is f of x. And so since g of x is 2 of x or 2 times x minus 7 I'm gonna say that g of f of x is equal to 2 times f of x minus 7 because this right here is replacing the x in g of x. All right, <clears throat> now what is f of x? Well, up here, f of x is 3x to the negative 1. So I'm going to say 2 times 3x to the negative 1 minus 7. And then I just simplify. 2 times 3 is 6, so I get 6x to the negative 1 minus 7. This x to the negative 1 can't stay there, so we got to go just 6 over x to the first minus 7. And that's in simplified form. That's g of f of x. Now if I change this up and I say, okay, well, what's f of g of x? Well, that g of x is taking the place of x in f. So I'm going to say it's 3 times g of x to the negative 1. This g of x is 2x minus 7. So I'm going to say 3 times 2x minus 7. Now some people might go and say, well let's do 3 times 2x and 3 times negative 7. But if you remember order of operations, we have PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, all right, which stands for parentheses. We don't have anything going on in parentheses that we can solve. Exponents, we have this being raised to the negative 1, so we got to do that first. Then multiplication and division, then addition and subtraction. So we're going to have to do this first. And raising something to the negative 1 means to put it on the bottom. And so we're going to have 3 over 2x minus 7. And I cannot simplify that anymore because nothing cancels. And so that is f of g of x. All right, and then the last one says h of g of x. Well, h is right here, so we're going to plug in g of x for this x because that's where it's replacing it. So h of g of x is going to be g of x plus 4 over 3. I just replaced the x here with g of x. What is g of x? Well, it's 2x minus 7 plus 4. So here's my g of x, and then that's over 3. Now this I can simplify a little bit further. 2x minus 7 plus 4 is 2x minus 3, and that's all over 3. If I really wanted to, I could go ahead and, and simplify this a little bit more and say 2 thirds x minus 3 over 3, or 2 thirds x minus 1. But it is also okay to say it's um, right here. So this is h of g of x. 
or we could say this is h of g of x. So either one is okay, right there or right there. Now for domains here, um, we're pretty good because this domain is all real numbers. We're not dividing, we're not even rooting. Here, we're not dividing with an x um, or even rooting, so our domain is all real numbers there as well. Here, this is a little bit of an issue because we have three over x, and so x cannot be zero because if we had x be zero, then that would let us, um, that would mean it's undefined because you can't divide by zero. And so when I look through here, I can't divide by zero, I can't divide by zero, I can't divide by zero. So my domain here is x cannot be zero. When I get to this point, <clears throat> I'm really concerned with this final answer anywhere in between. No issues here, no issues here, but when I get to here, I know that 2x minus 7 cannot be 0. So the way that I do this is I say, okay, well, what if it was 7? What if it was 0? And I get 2x equals 7, and I divide by 2, and I get x equals 7 halves. So 7 halves would make it 0. So our domain for this problem is all x's except 7 halves, because if I plug in 7 halves, then I would get 0 in the denominator. Same thing over here. We're not dividing by zero here because we're dividing by three. There's no way that we can get zero on the bottom. So this one, the domain is actually all real numbers. And so that helps with our domains. Now let's evaluate a little bit of a composition of functions. Here again, we have f of x equals 3x plus 2, g of x equals negative x squared, and h of x equals x minus 2 over 5. When I plug these in, what I like to do is I like to evaluate g of negative 3 first and then plug that answer into f of x. And so I'm just going to write f of g of negative 3. I'm just going to plug it in here. So I'm going to say negative, negative 3 squared. Again, PEMDAS, order of operations, comes into play here because we have negatives and negatives and exponents. So we do exponents first. That's negative 3 squared, which is positive 9. Even if you type it in on your calculator, it's positive 9. Okay, so you have to be sure that you do that correctly. Negative 3 squared is a positive number. But then we have this negative out front, and so now I'm doing f of negative 9. Well, that's pretty easy. I just plug it in. So 3 times negative 9 plus 2. What's negative uh, 9 times 3? Negative 27 plus 2. That's negative 25. So negative 25 is my uh, solution. All right, if I go here and I say h of uh, f of negative 9, I'm just going to plug in negative 9 into f. So I have 3 times negative 9 plus 2. So I say h of, this is negative 27 plus 2. All right, that's h of negative 25. And then what do I do with that negative 25? Well, I plug it in here. And I say negative 25 minus 2 all over 5. Negative 25 minus 2 is negative 27 divided by 5, and that's my answer. I can't simplify that any further, and so I'm good to go with that. And then the last one, f of f of 7. Okay, well, f of f of 7. I'm going to say f of, and plug this 7 in over here. So it's 3 times 7 plus 2. 3 times 7 is 21, so I have f of 21 plus 2. That would be f of 23. f of 23 means I'm going to go ahead and plug in 23 for x, so it's 3 times 23 plus 2. 3 times 23, let's see, that's 69 plus 2, 71 is our final answer. So I hope that helped. Um, there's a couple examples of how we compose functions using variables and also compose functions using uh, actual numbers and evaluate them. And so I uh, hope that helps you out. Thanks for listening.